What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers come first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. And Mr. Hang562, obviously my Super Saiyan is going to be Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct version because it's pretty darn cool. And using the P1 back here, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to do it as best as I can because I can't really do the silver hair, but this is close enough, right? Anyways, today was the second day of NAB, and again, it was another day filled with a lot of learning of new tech and some tech that was actually out a year ago that I didn't know about, but it definitely interested me, so I'm going to spew everything out in no particular order, trying to get everything out of my head because today was also an awesome day because I ran into D for Darius, and I also ran into Mr. Cheesy Cam, who was helping out Gen Energy at their booth, and essentially, if you guys don't know who Gen Energy is, they make Sony V-Bound batteries, very robust ones that can be dropped, crushed, and um, it also has short protection. So if you short it out, it's not going to damage the battery as well as overcharging and discharging protection. And basically, it also has a much higher amp uh, draw. You can either get the 15 amp version all the way up to a 22 amp version. So if you're powering some very power hungry stuff like the RE Sky panels or even the Aperture 300D, these batteries will have you covered. And they do range from all different sizes. So check them out if you're in the market for Sony V-mount batteries. Now, moving on, Magwell. Magwell, from what I can remember, was just something that had to do with streaming. I didn't actually know what they else they did. So I wandered over to their booth when I saw it and I was introduced to something that was actually released about a year ago and it's something that really interested me because it's for live streamers. Now, can I imagine this? You can actually live stream with a tiny little box about this big. It does not require any major battery power. You can actually probably uh, you can actually power it with a USB power bank and um, essentially, it's a set it and forget it solution that requires no computer. There's an HDMI input, and you can obviously have an HDMI switcher if you want to have multiple HDMI sources on, from your GH5s or GH4s, what have you. And then there's a loop through for a monitor so you can see what's actually going on. Now, once you've set up everything in your smartphone in conjunction with this little box, you basically just in the future just need to hit the red record button as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi and or hardwired to the Ethernet, you're basically good to go. You don't actually have to go do anything else. And not only that, in the front, there is a microphone port as well as a headphone port for your monitoring and audio input uh, stuff that you want to throw at it, as well as a USB 3.0 port that allows you to actually record your live stream so that you actually have a copy that you can refer to later or make me do some cuts for another video down the line. This this retails at about 350 and I think this is awesome because one of the things that's kind of sort of stopping me is the thought about investing into another computer for my live streaming needs because my laptop might not actually be powerful enough for what I want to do and I don't really want to use my main work computer either. So and the fact that you can basically essentially go mobile and still have an HDMI studio assuming that your Wi-Fi hotspot or what have you is powerful enough and have enough data um, you literally just need a power bank with two USB ports that can pump out 2.5 four amps, you can power your Wi-Fi hotspot and your um, little port Magwell box, and you're good to go, even on the go out in the middle of nowhere. Uh assuming your hotspot's good. Now I did get to stop over at the Aperture booth and it was kind of crazy and surreal to see Ted there because I've seen him in all these YouTube videos and now he's actually there. So um, that was really awesome. So they have some new products coming out. They have one which is a new spot attachment. So very, um, very akin to kind of like theater stuff. You can put gobos in there and get some really awesome shapes um, to come out of it because it's kind of a little bit harder to do with a Fresnel lens, but you can definitely do it with this uh, spot attachment. The next thing is they're, they've announced a new 300D Mark II, which is going to be brighter, and they're also having a fanless control box, which I know some people were saying the control box was either too loud or the aperture unit itself is too loud, but everything's now going towards fanless, at least the control boxes, so that's definitely an improvement on that end. And then last but not least, they have this big, huge honkin' RGBW uh, panel. And this thing was not only ginormous, but everything is all built in so that you don't actually need a separate ballast. And uh, it has a control box with all the stuff that you could possibly want out of an RGBW light. So it's really cool to finally see 
Aperture really kicking it in to the RGB world. And of course, they're gonna come hitting hard with a very, very bright option. Continuing on, some of you have asked me to take a look at what Zoom had to offer in terms of the F6. Now, I personally did not know much about the F6. I know that they do audio recorders, but anyways, this thing looks cool. It takes a Sony MPF battery in the back, which is awesome. And if you use the largest one, you can basically get through an entire shoot day. If you're using a lot of phantom power, you might need two batteries, but honestly, that's really cool that they're now starting to use some F, uh, Sony MPF batteries because a lot of us have them lying around. Um, another thing that was really cool that they told me was that it now has something called dual AD and that's the laundry. And what this dual AD is gonna do is you have your whisper track, you have your roaring track, and it's going to basically determine everything and give you one track. Now, this is awesome to me because I actually, my task cam right now has the dual recording feature, but I don't necessarily want to have to line up two tracks and then kind of do all my little tweaking. I'd rather have one track that just did it right or it did it as close as it possibly could, and therefore I don't have to worry about um, doing these uh, audio Oh, wow, I'm lost for words right now, but you know what I mean. That to adjust the audio level as I'm talking between the two tracks just to get them to kind of sort of match up. I love that the Zoom's gonna be able to do this. In terms of its de design, it's very different. Instead of being big and wide, it's actually a little bit more long and narrow. And this is a very interesting design and definitely I, I would like it. In terms of pricing point, they didn't have an actual pricing point for it yet. They said it's probably gonna sit somewhere between the Oh, wow. What is it, the F4 and the F8 or F10? I can't remember. I don't use Zoom products, but it's somewhere in between those two models that are already out, so you can more or less guess what the price is gonna be. Now, I did go and check out Zcam because some of you had asked me to go check out Zcam as well. And, um, you know, I remember the E1 coming out and I was like, oh, yeah, maybe, sh sure. But, you know, I never really gave much thought about it. But talking to the representatives and seeing what they've actually done with the E2 line in terms of just the E2, the E2C, the E2G, and then there was like uh, another E that I can't remember. There's like so many different models and they all um, have a different price range. What was really cool about it was I'm looking at these specs. Um, the EC looks pretty good. It doesn't shoot to ProRes, but for what it is at 899, I think it was, um, that camera definitely looks really nice. And then the next step up is gonna give you ProRes. And then of course they have the global shutter, which I didn't know that they had a um, E2G version, but yes, there is a global shutter version. So that is definitely cool. It's definitely more expensive. And then as you continue going on, you're gonna start hitting those Super 35. And um, there was a full frame one that was being talked about too. I have the brochure and that's definitely gonna be something in my longer recap video. So anyways, very cool on the Z cam front. In terms of Zacuto, again, somebody asked me to check out Zacuto. I went over there and they had a very small booth, but there really wasn't anything there. So, um, at least nothing worth noting. So unfortunately, there's not much for me to report on in terms of if Zacuto has made anything awesome. And hey, that's it for the day two recap of NAB 2019, everyone. Of course, if you have something that you want me to go check out a booth or ask a certain question, definitely let me know and I will try to get to that booth as best as I can. And until then, there's only two more days of NAB, so stay tuned for those recaps as I venture and try to find more stuff to talk about. All right, see you then.